Hi everybody! Ever wonder how easy it is to make mussels? Well, mussels are really economical. They're really, really good. And they're really easy and fast. Loaf of bread, little salad, and what a wonderful dinner. Winter, summer, doesn't make any difference. So let me show you how easy it is to do. Diane here. And let's just get started. So, here's what you do. There's two ways to do it. I'm going to do one with a white, more like a French style of mussel. So, into a pot. I'm using a flatter one as opposed to a tall, deep stock pot because I want to be able to get the mussels out without tearing them apart. Into the pot go the mussels. It's on high heat. Then, on top of the mussels, I'm going to squeeze just a little bit of lemon. I am going to, and that's the juice of maybe just a tiny bit of lemon, quarter of a lemon tops. Um, I'm adding some fresh chopped parsley. I like Italian parsley. It's got a little more flavor. Some onions sliced, about an eighth of an inch thick. Then to that, we are going to put a splash of white wine and then we're going to put some herbs. It's winter so I'm using dried. Just about an eighth tops teaspoon of dried thyme. I'm not going to go outside and go pick chives because there aren't any anyway. So I'm using freeze dried chives. They're wonderful. Keep the onion thing going on. We're going to add just a tiny splash of heavy cream. Not much. And then about a tablespoon of butter. That doesn't take much. And also some fresh chopped garlic. You know, good healthy tablespoon anyway. And then, still on high heat, make sure that's clear. I'm not adding any liquid and I'm not adding any salt and pepper. But I am going to cover it. We're going to keep that on high heat and about five minutes it should be done. Now, the portion that you want to think about, how many mussels to buy, um, if you're going to eat them for a main course, you want to figure about a pound a person. If you're doing them as a side, possibly maybe half a pound a person because they're really good. You'll see what happens with the liquid that comes out of these. Um, it's a great drinking broth. It's a good broth to dip bread into. Anyway, it's just really good. So we're going to leave these covered for about five minutes and I'll show you what they look like when they're done. And I will keep an eye on them from time to time. I did, you don't really have to clean mussels all that much. You want to rinse them in cold water, but debearding them because so many of the mussels that you buy are farm raised, you really don't have to de-beard them anymore. I do prefer East Coast mussels because they're uh, not as many of them are farm raised and they actually do have beards that you just rip the sides off of. But anyway, these are, I think, probably Prince Edward Island mussels, PEI as they're called. And they're good, but they're just not as meaty as mussels that usually come out of the East Coast. So anyway, we'll keep an eye on this. As soon as they start to open, we're going to gently turn it. And as soon as they're all open, which is like I say, five minutes, then they're going to be done. Okay, I'll be back in about five minutes. All right, let's take a look. This hasn't even been five minutes because the pan was hot when I put these in. And oh my gosh, looky, looky, they're starting to open. Now one thing that you do not want to do is to overcook them because... Oh, they just turn into rubber buckshot. They're horrid when they're overcooked. So as soon as they start to open, which these have, then you want to pull them out. Another thing to do before you cook them is to let them rest a little bit. You don't want the muscle tightening up um, before you cook them because it just adds a little bit more time to the cook. Same thing with clams, too. Clams, especially if you want to shut them uh, cold, you want to let them rust a little bit so the muscle relaxes. Anyway, I am going to pull these out so that I can reduce the broth a little bit. But you can see, well I'll show you in a little bit, they are all opened up and looking really, really, really good. 
the broth is going to be heavenly for sure. And you'd be surprised by how much broth that these little devils release. Anyway, they're almost out of here. Now, into, whoops, run away, into the pot is going to go the salmon. When you're fishing these out, if you wanted to cook anything else in the pan, in this broth, make sure you get all the little muscle pieces out, like these little bits, so that they don't get overcooked. So I'm just going to put those aside for a minute. And then, into that broth is going to go a few pieces of salmon that I had. And that's going to poach for just a couple of minutes. And oh my gosh, this is going to be just heavenly. So, pan and shake that up a little bit so that they're all evenly coated. And then I'm also, at this point, going to put just a couple tablespoons of capers. I love capers. Capers and salmon are just a wonderful combination. Capers and mussels, capers and seafood, capers and chicken. Capers are just really good, so I always have some. Anyway, those are that's going to stay in the pot for just a few minutes, probably about four or five minutes, and dinner will be served. Oh my, they're done. Is this a little slice of heaven? You betcha. You know, and not really all that fattening. Yes, I used a little cream. Yes, I used a little bit of butter, but really not much. A couple tablespoons of cream and maybe a little bit of butter. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put just a little bit of salmon in the bottom because it happened to come out. Then we're going to put some of these luscious, luscious mussels on top. Oh my God. Yeah, this is really good. And you know, it's so simple. You don't need anything else. You don't need salt and pepper because these are grown in salt water. And you really don't need pepper because they're just everything that I added. The capers kind of add a little, not peppery flavor, but anyway, capers are really good. If you don't have them and you're not familiar with them, get a little jar. You want the little tiny ones, not the big ones. The big ones have their uses too. They're really good, but not necessarily in this. And then I am going to take some of the poaching liquid from the bottom and pour that on the top because that is the best part. Oh my God, it's wonderful. Then, well, so how's that looking? Now, this can be served with a little piece of focaccia or a little piece of pizza bread or French bread or baguette, whatever. But the object is to use the bread for a dunking vehicle for the liquid in the bottom because mm, perfect beyond perfect now I see this all the time when I go out and people really miss the boat when they get their cute little cocktail forks out and then take the mussels out of the shell with their cute little cocktail fork and they're missing all the broth which is the best part so the way I was brought up to eat them, we used to go collect them when we were little. We'd get these little um, air um, air things on our arms and get some bushel baskets and go collect them off the barnacles. But anyway, so here's the mussel. I dipped it in a little bit of this sauce um, down the hatch. I'll tell you what. They're perfect. Wow. What's not to love about those? Now let's try a little bit of that salmon. Oh my God. This is definitely a wonderful dinner, lunch, Sunday, supper, whatever you want to call it. Mm. Heavenly. You can put scallops in there. You can put shrimp in there. And I will come back and do... Um, how to with a red sauce, which is really good too, um, chopped tomatoes. But anyway, that's the white version, more in the French theme. I hope you enjoy it and I really hope you try it because 
it's pretty easy and it doesn't get any faster than that. So we'll look to see you on the next episode. Thanks for joining me in the kitchen. Diane signing off.